I posted a video of this machine running a few years ago and I got a lot of interest. Um, a lot of people were asking how I built it or where did I get it or, or, or where did it come from. And um, so I thought I'd just post this video, make a little video here to show um, how I made this thing. Uh, first of all, to get this out of the way, I did make most of this machine. Um, there were a lot of questions on if I just bought a machine and took a case off of it, which I don't think would make a lot of sense. But um, I, I kind of cheated in that I worked for an espresso machine manufacturer for a few years, and so I was able to uh, pillage uh, some some parts from their their graveyard of parts that came in and didn't need spec. So the tanks and uh, the tanks and some of the valves and, and some of the accessories and stuff I made or I, I got for for a little to no cost and then um, the rest of it I either got on eBay or Amazon or McMaster Car or whatever and, and put it together myself. Um, this by no means makes any financial sense if you're going to make one of these things if you don't have a source for cheap or free parts. This thing was uh, probably close to a thousand dollars just for me to construct and like I say I got most of the parts for free. So, so with that out of the way, I can talk a little bit about the spe specs of this machine. It is a dual boiler machine. It's based on a Slayer single group machine. So the um, brew group and the steam tank are both from a single group Slayer. Uh, it's uh, set up as a 120 volt machine. So it's a 600 watt front boiler and 1200 watt uh, steam boiler. And uh, it runs on an Arduino as a controller. I wrote the firmware from scratch. Um, I'm certainly no expert on writing firmware, but it was pretty easy. Um, the firmware, all it really does is keep the turn on and off the steam tank boiler. It keeps the steam tank water level at the desired height, and there's a little PID loop in there to keep the brew group temperature stable. And all this has uh, been surprisingly stable. This machine you can see is quite dirty now uh, versus the original video that I posted. It's been running pretty much continuously for the last few years uh, making you know probably at least half a dozen shots a day sometimes up to maybe two dozen shots a day and I've had almost no issues with it. Um, it's been surprisingly reliable. It just it just works. Uh, that So that's that's been really satisfying to to witness. We could talk about some of the plumbing on this machine first. Um, you can see this part is probably the most intricate. This is all soldered together by myself. I actually just use soft solder to solder all these joints, but they've proven to be reliable. This side, this is all just drains. So, um, you know, everything that drains out of here is just wastewater. So this is kind of a manifold to group all the drains together. You can see there's a steam tank drain here. And so when you loosen uh, this valve here, when you loosen that valve, the steam pressure will push the steam tank water out of this valve and then up into the steam manifold and then down through this drain and then into the drip tray, which isn't shown here. There's a drip tray that sits out front. And then same thing with the uh, the brew group. There's a same drain valve here. You open it up and the water comes out and then goes up into the drain manifold and then it comes back down and out of the out into the drip tray. Um, also connected to the drain manifold is a three-way valve outlet. So that's a, uh, a valve that's on the brew group. And all that does is uh, it lets water in and out of, or in, into the brew group, high pressure water. And then uh, when you turn off the brew group, when you flip it off, this valve will vent all of the excess pressure above the coffee out through this tube and then into the drain manifold. So that's just a way to uh, vent the excess pressure out of your portafilter so it doesn't spit on you when you open the portafilter. The The final thing that's going into the drain manifold is this, which is a uh, expansion outlet. So as the water heats up in this brew group, it'll expand. And so the excess pressure will come through this tube and then go through this, which is uh, basically just a uh, somewhat of a pressure relief valve that's set to uh, some pressure above what you want to brew your coffee at. In this case, it's probably set to like 12 bar or something. And so if any pressure on the upstream side of it goes over 12 bar, then it'll automatically dump through the valve into the drain manifold. For the inlet side of the brew group, which is the 
the water that's at pump pressure will come out come out of the pump which isn't mounted to the machine and then it'll come into this fitting here and then that runs all the way across the machine underneath the tank and then comes up here and then this goes into the tank and so that's the high pressure water that comes in and so like I say when you when you flip the switch and turn on the pump pressure it'll just feed pressure right into there and then the inlet side of the steam tank is over here and so uh, not high pressure water, uh, like line, line pressure water will come into that fitting there. And then again, pass underneath the machine and then go into this valve here. This valve is kind of tucked underneath the machine, but you can see that's where the water comes in. And then when, uh, when the controller calls for more water into the steam tank, then all it does is opens up this valve, which passes water through and then into the steam tank there. Some other parts of the plumbing are this guy here, which is a pressure stat. So what this is, just a, uh, a switch that clicks on and off when the um, steam tank pressure is, is uh, high or low. In this case, it, it'll click off at around 1.2 bar is the target pressure of the steam tank. And then, uh, you know, once it gets below a bar or something like, like that, it'll click back on. So that's just plumbed into the steam tank here. And you see this plumbing goes down and then across and then back up. And the reason this is so long and it's not just a direct shot is that these things are, are heat sensitive, so if you could shed some of the heat through this tubing before it makes it the pressure stat, then it just makes these things last a little bit longer. And again, I haven't had any problems with this thing at all. This is I just found it on eBay. I think it's a replacement for a Lama Zoko part, and um, you know it's been operating uh, continuously for a few years now, and I haven't had any issues with that. I got this pressure gauge from eBay. It's a replacement for some kind of machine. I don't remember what it is, maybe somebody in the comments can identify what machine that gauge is from. It's just like a, uh, a, new, a new replacement. So one side of that gauge has pump pressure and then the other side has steam pressure. And that gauge is kind of floating on the copper lines. It's not mounted in any way. Um, so you can see this one here comes from the top of the steam tank and that goes into the steam side. And then this one here comes from the uh, uh, inlet side of the valve. Some of the fittings that are necessary on top of this machine are this guy here, which is a vacuum breaker. And what that does is it allows air to come out of the steam tank as it's warming up. And then once you start to build steam tank pressure, there's a little, there's a little uh, plunger in there that the steam tank, the steam pressure pushes up and closes that valve. So then the steam tank can start building pressure. This here is a pressure relief valve. So that sets a two and a half bar and under normal conditions it does nothing. But if your steam tank happens to run away or if it, uh, if you just keep building excess pressure for some, uh, from some issue, then this will, will blast all of your steam out. So your tank doesn't explode or so a fitting doesn't leak or whatever. This is just the, uh, water level sensor. So all it is, is a stainless steel probe that goes down into the steam tank and it's at the height that you want your level, water level to be and so uh, all it's doing is detecting when the water touches the tip of that probe and turning on and off the fill valve. This guy here is the steam outlet and what I did I used a, I just kind of cobbled this together with parts that I found so you can see this is just a ball valve that opens and closes. Uh, and that's what out, outlets the steam and then I just made this line to come out and then into this elbow I just welded that elbow right to the tank just as a means of supporting and then Comes up and I kind of cobbled this together with some fittings. This didn't come out very well It still articulates like a steam wand should but it's a little stiff and this leaks too. It kind of drips Out of the side of there. It's been doing that for quite some time though without any real issues, but it's still kind of cobbled and annoying. And then this is just an off-the-shelf steam wand. I'll show you some of the electronics on the top side here and then afterwards I'll flip it over and show you what the controller looks like underneath. So starting up here, this is just a regular old toggle switch that flips on and off the um, brew. So all, all, all it does is turn on the pump and then it also um, turns on the brew valve and uh, also tells the controller that it has start brewing. So the way it does that is it's actually a two pole switch. So one of these poles is just five volts 
And so that just sends five volts to the controller as a signal to show to, to let it know that it started brewing. The bottom switch here is a uh, is 110 volts, and so one outlet of the 110 volts operates the pump, and the other outlet operates the um, the uh, brew valve. And so that's all that's doing. I I did have one of these switches wear out, and I think it's because it just had coffee in it. It just got kind of gross in there and stopped working. You had to kind of slam it to get it to turn on and off. This guy here is a temperature probe. All that's doing is that's just submerged into the water in the brew head and it reports the temperature of the brew water back to the controller. And then the controller decides to either uh, turn on or turn off the steam element based on the what, what temperature you set and what temperature it is. This so here is the uh, brew element. So I just 3D printed this little cap to pop over it. But all that is is just a simple little heating element. And then same thing back here. This is another heating element just for the steam water. And then that's pretty much it for the electronics on the top side. So I'm going to flip this machine over and show you what it looks like underneath. I haven't actually looked underneath this thing since I built it a few years ago, so I have no idea what to expect, but it's probably pretty gross. Um, I'm going to first take this cover off because it's covering part of the electronics underneath. So it's just these three screws up front here. So there's what it looks like underneath. It's not as, uh, not as gross as I'd expected it to be. You can see this is the steam tank inlet valve, so the the low pressure water comes in here and then this valve turns on and pushes water into the uh, steam tank. There's a, a few solid state relays and what these do is allow the controller to turn on and off the, uh, the three heating elements. There's actually two heating elements in the steam tank and then one in the brew group, so that's what that does. There's just a pair of regular relays. These aren't solid states, they're conventional relays. I'm only using one of them and all that does is turns on and off the steam valve. This is, you can see this is an Arduino, this is a knockoff Arduino, what would it be, Nano? Arduino, Arduino Nano? Uh, and I'm kind of blown away that this thing just continuously has been operating for so long under kind of harsh conditions and hasn't had a single issue at all. That kind of blows my mind. I really wasn't expecting that thing to actually hold up as long as it has. This guy here is the power supply and all it does is takes 110 volts in and then outputs five volts to power all the five volt, volt devices like the Arduino and the solid state relays and, and that's all it is. I, I machine these little threaded nylon threaded standoffs as a way to distribute power because there ended up being a lot of peripherals that I need to connect all together so that was my way of doing that without making too much of a mess of it. So there it is all cleaned up, plugged back in. You can see it's coming up to temperature so it's starting to spit some steam out of there and once the steam pressure gets high enough then it'll close that valve. I hope that answers some of the questions that some of you folks had about how I built it. Uh, if you have any questions or, or comments or anything, please just leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, thanks for watching.